Hi, I'm Kirsten Chick, author of Nutrition Brought to Life, and this podcast is a companion to the book. You can listen as you read Nutrition Brought to Life, or before as a kind of preview, or after you've finished the book as a refresher. Either way, I hope this helps you make some small changes that make a big difference in your life. Hello, me again. I hope you're enjoying this podcast series so far. We're about a third of the way through now, and we've looked at self-nourishment, digestion, energy production, insulin resistance, and blood sugar balance, comfort eating and snacking, and my three mindful mouthfuls practice. This week's chapter introduces the fight, flight, freeze concept. Some of the ways the freeze response can impact you, and how to start melting that and letting go. I found this concept to be fundamental to my work because like inflammation, getting stuck in this freeze response seems to be a key feature of how illness develops. Most of you will have heard of your fight or flight response to stress and trauma. So in a threatening situation, your physical and mental systems will switch to a state that's primed for either fighting or running away. Your heart beats faster, your vision narrows and focuses on the threat, and your muscles tense, ready for action. At the same time, the part of your brain that acts instinctively, responding to fear or pleasure, takes over, and your ability to learn new things or reflect reduces. You also downgrade digestive and reproductive processes so they're not taking up too much energy. This is a really useful response, and you can cope well with this if it's a short-term state. If you're primed to fight or run away, coiled, ready to spring into action, but don't actually do either of those things, then you can get stuck in a freeze response. Or indeed, your body can choose to just freeze, as this can also be a really helpful option. We're often told to freeze if attacked by an animal in the wild, and this can be a life-saving strategy. In his book, Waking the Tiger, Peter Levine gives the example of a gazelle being chased and caught by a cheetah. The gazelle can't run away anymore, and it knows it can't fight. So in this case, it goes limp. This is also a type of or an extension of the freeze response and serves to numb the gazelle so it won't feel the full pain and trauma of being eaten alive. In Peter Levine's example, the cheetah is fooled into a full sense of security, relaxes its grip, and the gazelle is able to free itself and get away. How often have you frozen or gone limp in response to a stressful or threatening situation? I've often given myself a hard time for doing this, but I now see it as a positive response to situations where I had little choice. Peter Levine's gazelle then has a good shake to melt its freeze response and get the energy and nutrients flowing back around the body, including its digestive system, reproductive system, and parts of the brain that have been downgraded. We are animals in nature too. And we have the options of fight, flight, freeze and collapse in life-threatening situations and also our day-to-day stressful events like arguments, deadlines, overwhelming lists of things to do, financial insecurity and health concerns, for example. Every time something happens or we just listen to the news, a bit of us tenses. Every now and then we might have a good old sob or belly laugh, which serves a similar purpose to shaking after an accident or the gazelle shaking when it gets free. It melts that freeze response. If your day-to-day stresses and traumas persist or build up, however, your digestion and reproductive hormones can struggle, as can your mood, your short-term memory and ability to focus, make decisions and think rationally. Your muscles stay tense, both the bigger muscles in your arms, legs, and heart, and the tiny muscles around your blood vessels, 
everything stays contracted. This restricts the flow of blood and other fluids around your body. Something I haven't spoken enough about yet is hydration. When I ask people how much water they drink, the answer is often "Mm, not enough. We all know we need to drink more water, but often don't get around to it. Perhaps if we knew the reason why, we'd make more effort. Water is important for so many things. You need it for structure and also for the moment to moment chemical reactions in your blood, cells and tissue to happen. Digestive enzymes and detoxification enzymes can't work without water, for example. You also need water for internal transport. If you're well hydrated, your blood can carry nutrients and hormones to where they need to go and toxins and waste materials out of the body. And your cells can be hydrated enough for all its biochemistry to happen. To enable all of this, you need to drink enough water. But that water also needs to be able to flow. If your body is tense from stress, including all the tiny muscles around your blood vessels, then that will restrict the flow, which will restrict your ability to be healthy. So you can be drinking plenty of fluids, but if you're stuck in a degree of freeze response, you may well be functionally dehydrated. So what can we do about this? Well, we can allow ourselves to laugh and cry more for a start, plus anything we can do to ground and center ourselves. Our fight, flight, freeze response can make us feel frantic and disconnected from our physical bodies and from the ground, like the rug's literally been pulled from beneath our feet. We can reverse this with calming, grounding, and reconnecting activities and ways of eating. The three mindful mouthfuls of practice I described last time is a great strategy to include. Spending time in nature is invaluable or even just feeling your feet on the floor or your bum on the chair. I've also learned a lot from the Chinese five elements approach that I share a little of in the book. For example, earth element foods can help us feel grounded again. Many of these are root vegetables or grow close to the earth, like carrots, squash and pumpkins, and so energetically can help to ground us. They also provide us with a natural sweetness, a flavour we often crave in times of stress, but a gentler, more nourishing sweetness than chocolate bars and cakes. When we feel grounded, we feel safer and things start to relax and flow in our bodies again. With that sense of relaxation and trust, we're able to let go of anything we've been tightly holding on to, whether it's emotions, our breath, or even poo. A long stretch of constipation might dissipate once the stress melts away. Letting go relates to the Chinese metal element, and is encouraged by foods that help us to breathe, sweat and poo more, like mild spices, onions, garlic and other pungent foods. And then everything is truly free to flow again, as embodied by the Chinese water element. Full flowing hydration means full health, like the abundant ecosystem of an active river. The river is healthy, And so is the land, plant life and animal life that depends on it. Seaweed is such a wonderful support for this as it provides so many electrolytes that help fluids flow in and out of your cells as well as nutrients to help the muscles around them relax. There are recipes in the book to help you explore all of this. So, Maybe just spend a few minutes now getting a sense of how you feel right now. Do you feel a little tense? Maybe even gripped with tension? Or comfortably relaxed? Are you holding on at any level? Or are you able to process and let go of emotions, food and its waste material and toxins? 
Are you feeling stagnant and stuck or flowing and free? Then jot down a couple of things you might do to help you feel or keep you feeling more fluid, perhaps including some of the earth, metal or water element foods, spending more time in nature, gentle breathing exercises, or perhaps the three mindful mouthfuls practice. The wonderful thing about our bodies and emotions is that they tend to influence each other. So when you free things up physically, you do so emotionally too. When you feel nourished by food and water, you feel more buoyant and sustained on every level. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for listening to the Nutrition Brought to Life podcast. There's also a Facebook group you can join called Nutrition Brought to Life podcast community, where you can share useful insights and recipes, ask questions and get more support on your nutrition journey. If you haven't read it yet, there's so much more in the book, Nutrition Brought to Life, as well as all the scientific references and some glorious pictures. And you can find out more about me at kirstenchick.com.